can speak to that. Um, you know, one thing that I found so attractive about uh, CCS is the community. Um, it, it was instantly this like family that I felt like I was welcomed into um, where everybody's curious and everybody's creative. And there's just all of these like webs of people knowing people and wanting to work with other people across all of these different disciplines. And it kind of feels like this like liberal arts little gem within this larger university. And so, you know, it could feel like an Oberlin or like a, you know, Bard or something like that, but you still have access to this large university that um, so many of us want that sort of college experience. I myself did too. I went to Indiana University for undergrad. It's a huge school, but the music school was small. Um, but again, what I think about with CCS is that not only is each individual major within CCS focused and it's a small group that gets a lot of attention from their faculty, but it also is an instant bigger community with all these different interests of people that you're instantly put in a field with so that it's not secluded. You aren't just in the art school. You aren't just in, you know, the science department. You aren't, you know, you've always got this constant flow of many different curiosities around you, which I think is really, really great when you're in college to have that kind of undergraduate curiosity. Yeah, I agree with uh, a lot of the things that Sarah brought up. Um, the term welcoming uh, certainly came to mind too. Uh, since I've been at, at CCS, uh, I feel like everyone has been so warm and welcoming and uh, students are, there's, it doesn't feel very cliquish, even between majors, everyone kind of seems to get along and everyone seems really encouraging. Um, as a faculty member, something I've really appreciated about CCS is that the students seem very intellectually curious about things beyond their major and then how they can um, reinterpret these other disciplines within their own practice. That's been really interesting uh, this quarter. I'm teaching a class on language and music. And among the students I have beyond the composers, I have students in comparative uh, literature who are like writing students. I have uh, I have a grad student. I have uh, students who are majoring in physics or students who are currently taking film classes and they're all providing these different perspectives um, which is great not only for me but it's really great for the discussions uh, with the other students and uh, during my private lessons uh, each week with with the composition majors it's always fascinating to see what they bring in because often it has to do with projects that are beyond just the scope of a traditional composition degree. They're studying you know, philosophy and, oh, how does uh, the philosophy of Nietzsche relate to your compositional practice? Or um, they're collaborating with students who are directors and they're creating an independent film. Well, you know, <laughs> then how are you using cinematography to, uh, to um, influence what sort of musical decisions you're making within a score? So it's really been fascinating to see the kind of collaboration and uh, just the collaborative atmosphere here at, at uh, CCS. Um, I'm, I'm loving that everyone's um, sort of talking about collaboration because I know that was sort of um, uh, a common question um, from our students was how interdisciplinary uh, um, CCS can be. Um, and sort of to start with that subject, and I don't know what the answer is, so we'll, we'll see what we can get, but I wanted to ask our students um, what kinds of research or creative activities, and, and because this is an art and music um, uh, panel, it'll, it'll, I think, be more focused on those creative activities and projects. Um, what are you currently working on, um, and when did you start doing those kinds of projects within CCS? Um. So I'm a part of a research lab, a music cognition research lab under Dr. Janet Bourne, who's in the music department. Um, I've been in the lab, I believe since my second year, maybe my first year, it's kind of fuzzy. Um, but that's like the only official like thing I'm a part of at UCSB. 
other than like collaborations between the music department, like my friends and I like writing music together. Um, I'm currently preparing my junior jury. So that's my project for this quarter is making sure that my junior jury is all set and ready to go by the end of the quarter. But yeah. Um, Angelina, can I follow up on that? Um, what it, can you explain what a junior jury is um, and what kind of project that is for you? Yes, so in CCS Music Comp, we have two juries we have to submit throughout our time here, throughout the four, three or four years. Um, there's a sophomore jury and there's a junior jury. So the sophomore jury is a bit more, um, I wouldn't say relaxed, but it's a collection of shorter pieces. So things that you've written in some of your classes that you had to take or on your own time. And there are certain guidelines. Um, so you write pieces that follow in the guidelines, you submit a portfolio, and the composition faculty review it, and they basically tell you whether you've learned what you're supposed to learn and are ready to like move on in a sense. Um, it sounds more daunting than it is. I'm still scared, but I've been reassured that it's fine. If you don't pass, which I believe it's, uh, people don't pass, it just happens in this major, um, but you just get an assignment over the summer to like kind of show that you understand what you're doing and applying new techniques and whatnot. For your junior jury, it's a bit more involved. It's longer pieces, like six minute pieces, five minute pieces. Um, so they just wanna make sure that you're growing as a composition student and that you're taking what you're learning and you're putting it into your music. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on. What I would interject on that is that your senior year, you put on, composition majors are required to put on a recital. And so these uh, juries are also a way for us to keep track that you are going to be in good shape for your recital and going to be able to find performers, you know, and have um, well-formed pieces that will give a wide variety of your styles and abilities on your senior recital. Yeah, I'd also like to, to mention that with these juries, my perspective is definitely one of uh, transparency. Um, it's never like, oh, what, what exactly are we looking for in the jury? I don't know if, if it's going to be well. Like I, <laughs> I'm pretty critical uh, in terms of my, my view on uh, different pieces that people present during the lessons, but that's because I want it to be a total breeze for these juries. And i rather get all the hard stuff out of the way. And, you know, it's, it's just a much safer, uh, more encouraging atmosphere that way. Uh, I did my undergrad at a, um, a very traditional conservatory, and there was a great deal of like mystery around the annual juries and promotionals that uh, I, I feel like uh, you can be a lot more open with students and just say exactly what sort of things you need to progress to the next level. Thank you both. Let's see if we can hear um, from some art students. Um, we'll, go, we'll go from there. Right, and the question was projects that we're currently working on? Yes, sorry, I should revisit. Uh, yes. So yes, what kind of uh, projects and creative activities are you working on? Um, and when did you start working on projects like that in CCS? I see, okay. Um, so I've, ever since I started out in CCS, I've had a pretty strong interest in figurative art. So, um, I, this year I've been, re, I've been revisiting um, painting and like figurative painting, uh, taking the, the life painting class that's taught by Hank Pitcher, which is definitely a, um, a staple of like the CCS art and painting curriculum. Um, and this, these past couple of years I've also been doing a lot of uh, drawing and a big part of my uh, practice along with the figurative art I've been doing has also been um, doing uh, cartoons and illustrations for the student paper, The Daily Nexus. Um, so uh, I've kind of been able to like balance these two different practices um, in a way that has worked for me. One which is very much like um, with, with paintings and um, figure paintings and portraits and things, they kind of uh, you can work on them for a very long time. They don't necessarily need to be done right away. Like there's kind of an open-ended um, amount of time to work on them before you feel like they're done versus like um, this uh, working at the newspaper, which is much more like a deadline driven environment um, working digitally. So I found that to be, um, I found that to be a very satisfying balance for me. And I think that's one of the really nice things about CCS is that 
it's very much encouraged that you look to other organizations or other departments um, that you want to, you know, uh, learn more about or like research in and it can it more often than not it ends up enriching your own work in some way your own practice in some way so um, yeah that's what I've been doing um, so right basically um, like recently I've been going like getting together a gallery um, like plan with um, another book arts major and then two of my um, painting major friends um, so that's been taking up a lot of time. Uh, but next year is my um, mid-rise review. And so um, basically what that is, is um, around like like beginning of your junior year, you get you like get the gallery space um, in CCS and you put up all the work that you've done um, in the past two years. And um, you basically have um, all the arts faculty um, go into the room and like talk to you about like your work um, and give you feedback. Um, for a little bit um and so i'm kind of gearing up to like get ready and make sure the gallery is like filled and like with pieces that i really enjoy um so yeah um thank you I, I love hearing about sort of these different stages that everyone hits in their in their sort of progression through ccs i i do think it's it's an exciting thing that you're not just sort of expected to wait until your senior year to like flourish all this stuff like there's a, a constant kind of check and like growth with development um, and I think part of that has to do with the fact that we have these faculty advisors um, that each student has a faculty advisor uh, assigned to them to guide their academic career um, and what role do they play in your CCS life um, that connection with the faculty advisor and I don't know if we want to go down the same thing go ahead <laughs> Um, my faculty advisor is Leslie Hogan. She's the third music comp um, professor here at, in CCS. Um, she, she's my advisor and also my composition teacher. So I kind of get like the best of both worlds where I can just talk to her in my lesson about classes that I want to take or if I'm on track to graduate and on track to complete my GEs and everything and just general advice because CCS has such open-ended requirements so we can kind of just pick and choose exactly what we want to focus on. Um, so basically tailoring like my GEs and everything towards what I want to do after college. Um, but she also just provides a lot of support for me and I feel very supported and I know everything that's going on and I know exactly what I need to do and what I've done. And it's just been really great to have that such a close connection with an advisor and not have to wait a thousand years or like make an appointment like um, people in LNS have to do. So um, my advisor is uh, Daniel Connolly, um, and I think that he it's um, he's definitely much more of like a served as an advisor for like the ideas I'm working on and the work that I'm doing, um, and I've taken a lot of classes with him. Um, I think one really nice thing about all CCS faculty is that. Um, especially like in your major people you've taken classes with is you have the opportunity to like take uh, independent study units with them and like develop projects with them and like sort of absorb the knowledge they have about the subjects that they are knowledgeable about. So um, I've also worked pretty closely with uh, Hank Pitcher, who's the, um, uh, the other painting um, advisor, and he's been uh, a, a very uh, available resource and a very um, helpful mentor for me so i think that um it's uh where savannah and megan are much more like they'll help you with your academics and make sure you're on track there like your advisor is someone who will like be checking in with you with the stuff you're making and trying to you know say hey the the work you're doing right now reminds me of this artist which is such a great resource when you have a professor who's who has knowledge in those areas so um yeah i think that's been really fruitful for me um so my uh faculty advisor is linda ekstrom she's the main um person for book arts um and there's there's been a couple of people like have, have been gone going in and out but um she's like the more prominent person um and so um basically what she's been doing for me um recently is i've been 
um, applying for internships. And so she's been really helpful with that um, and really like going over with me all of like my essays and helping me with recommendation letters, which has been amazing because I've had classes with her like every the past two years, about two out of three quarters every time. Um, and so um, it's really nice to have gained a solid relationship with her um, and being able to like go to her with help um, for any project that I'm working on has been really, really like resourceful because she has so much knowledge with like book arts and like um, just structural issues and um, just anything that I really could need. Um, so it's been really cool learning from her and like bouncing off, I being able to bounce off ideas whenever I need, ha like have an artist block. I figure we'll check in with the our, our professors too and sort of see kind of the opposite side of the coin um, uh, because instead of having one faculty advisor, you have multiple students maybe that you're advising and, and what that experience was like for you and, and what kind of um, uh, developments um, you think are able to be achieved sort of for students through CCS and that relationship that maybe are um, sometimes more difficult in larger environments or in like the letters and science programs. Yeah, um, so I think that I'm still, as I'm, you know, first year faculty, I'm still getting kind of used to this role as an advisor as well. But I think in the music composition area, um, we try to, at least when they, students are starting, set up the individual students with their individual teacher. Um, so it makes things very personal and you get to know your student very well. Um, it's been a great way for me to understand my various students' interests. Um, because, you know, if you're in the College of Creative Studies, you're very creative and you're very curious. And so generally their interests are very wide and that's really cool to kind of hear um, what they're looking for and how they want to mold the degree to best suit them. Um, so, you know, I'm certainly there and uh, the other faculty is certainly there to help make sure that they, you know, have everything checked off that they need to. But there's also quite a lot of um, freedom, I think, in what sort of classes might count for certain credits within CCS, which is really exciting. Like, I know for the music major, um, there's some lectures that Leslie or Andrew or I would give that would count maybe as a music history credit or maybe as you know a different elective or things like that. Um, and so that sort of freedom with where things can fall under what makes your degree fulfilled is pretty exciting to me. Um, and I think it gives a lot of autonomy over your own degree, which is unlike I think a lot of other schools. Yeah, speaking of freedom, one of the things that makes the uh, music composition major here at CCS uh, distinct from a lot of programs that I'm familiar with um, is that the students do have quite a lot of freedom uh, to study with different composition faculty over their time uh, in the degree. So you might have a, an advisor, but you could, you're also free to, to take lessons with any of the composition faculty so you can get different perspectives over your time here and um, at a lot of institutions it is much more uh, of a strict lesson environment where this is your primary instructor you are with that person for four years and any notion of studying with anybody else is really frowned upon and it creates all kinds of conflict and that's not all the case here um, you know we'll have students who study with me one quarter and maybe Sarah the next quarter and Leslie the next quarter and you know it's there's no hard feelings at all it's it's a, it's a good thing you get different perspectives and you don't have to ask for permission either it's just kind of you sign up for who you want to study with so yeah. make sure that teachers don't get you know too protective <laughs> yeah um one of the things that I think we'll we'll do is kind of a, a slight, I won't, I won't call it an interruption because I think it's sort of a continuation of what some people are talking about with GEs. Um, and then I know that uh, some, uh, some students submitted that as a question as well, um, is that maybe Megan and I 
uh, can give sort of the staff perspective on GEs, um, and then we can circle around maybe to the students as well, um, in terms of uh, what a curriculum looks like and, and how that can be sort of used um, for students. Uh, Megan, I don't know if you wanna kind of give us your, your take on GEs. Um, I know sort of you, you typically do the prospective student visits for students who's, who drop by, so I feel like you've kind of got, um, you've got this on lockdown. Thank you. Um, yeah, so GEs for GEs for art and music are not not easy to like write down on paper. Um, so basically, what GEs look like for a CCS student is eight courses, completely outside of your area of stu of study, and no more than two from one area. Um, so that what that means that last part is if you were to take two classes in psychology great, those count as GEs, pro probably. Um, but, and if you were to take a third because you really enjoyed those, that third one may not count as a GE, it would still count as like a course that you took in units towards your graduation. So we try to get you to have a broad, broad spectrum. Um, and so so a GE for, for any of y'all would be really just whatever you're not working on. Um, so, like, I'm going to just give an example for a music um, time where you, she took a class in the biology department and you would think just automatically, yeah, that sounds like a GE for this person, but they were actually doing uh, or creating a music composition that was based on this time when they were out in nature and heard these beautiful bird sounds in California and wanted to learn specifically about birds in California so that they could um, put that into their composition. So for that very particular student, ecology of birds and a bird class in biology would not be a GE because it is very much relating to what they're doing and composing. Um, and so that's why we ask all of our students and for art too. So for an artist who, um, I don't know, is going to take, I'm just going to the top of my head and I know it's wrong but Sam did beautiful with um frog on it and so if she were to take a class about amphibians and she was trying to learn about how to uh paint this frog that wouldn't count um and so basically what we we ask of all of our art students is to come to myself in Savannah and say hey I'm thinking of taking this class would that kind of I just want to confirm that's going to be a GE for me and my next question will be like cool, great, what are you working on? Is that going to directly influence your art or music? And you'll say yes or no, and I will say yes or no. Um, so that's my short version. Um, yeah, I think that's great. I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit, and then I think Angelina's got her hand raised, um, so we'll, we'll hear from her too. I think that'll be kind of exciting. Um, so I'll say just in terms of GEs, the goal is um, two parts. So one is uh, outside of CCS, the GE requirements for other students are so many, so much more numerous. Um, so there are um, uh, eight GE requirements for CCS classes. So if you think you're going to be here for four years, I mean, that's really two classes per year that aren't related to your major. Um, that's a tiny fraction, um, really, compared to so many other students. Um, and it's an opportunity to take advantage of the fact that you are at this big research university that's going to have so many um, different kinds of departments beyond maybe what you're used to experiencing in high school. Um, so those kinds of classes uh, that maybe, you know, you would have liked to take um, German, but you just didn't have a German teacher, like take some German classes, um, take some philosophy classes, take some um, history of a particular country that you never knew, um, but you wanted to learn more about, or religious studies, or all these kinds of exciting things um, that are out there, and can, it's not that they don't, that they have, they can't inform your study. Uh, the goal of a GE in many ways is to broaden your horizons and to be interdisciplinary. So, you know, it's entirely possible that you'll get really inspired by something that you're doing, um, but it's, the idea is that, that it creates that breadth. Um, so that's really what we're looking for. So if you're, um, like Megan was saying, if you come to CCS Music Comp in order to write um, musical scoring for the stage, and then you take a, a theater and dance class that's about 
musical theater, um, that, that seems too close. Like, get, get out of there a little bit. Um, so we'll, we'll talk you through that, and that's part of what our goal is, both as staff advisors and your faculty advisors as well. Um, and I will let Angelina comment as well, because she's got, um, I think, something to say. Yeah, so I just wanted um, to go more in depth on like the GE thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys touched on it, but our requirements are eight GEs unrelated to our major and two GEs related to our major. Um, so when Megan was talking about having going outside to like biology class to learn how to write, to learn more about animals, to write about them, I believe that would count as a GE related to your major, but there are only two of them. So if you take like three classes that tie it directly to what you want to do, then the third class won't count, I believe, because I'm taking a film music class right now in the film department, and it does count towards my related GE, and I've taken a history of jazz in the Black Studies department, and that also counts to my GEs. So the, the ones related, you, ha you can't take as many of them as like a general classes that interest you. Um, that's my understanding of it, and that's what my advisor has told me. I don't know if it's changed now, but that's my understanding of it. Um, no, that's a good, that's a good clarification because, uh, so some programs will sort of customize the way that their GEs will work for their students. And that is true of music students that, um, that you have that sort of two unrelated or two related component and then eight unrelated. Um, but the unre the related ones are so close to what you're doing anyway, um, that in some ways they, they sort of, I imagine for students, they don't even feel like extra work to go beyond and, and sort of chase that down. It, it seems to be very in line. So. Um, I think that's a really exciting thing. Um, I know it's almost 340, and Angelina, I want to make sure that if any students have questions for you, that we get an opportunity to touch on it before we um, move on to some other questions. Um, so you can ask questions in two ways. Uh, one is um, through the chat uh, feature on the bottom of your screen. The other would be through manage participants. And so if you click on that button, it's kind of got two people on it. Um, you can raise your hand. And uh, then it will show us your, your raised hand in that participant screen, and we can um, unmute you and go in order and kind of take an opportunity to ask those questions. Um, does anybody have any questions, kind of burning questions, that they really want to make sure that Angelina is here for to help answer? Uh, we've got uh, Jillian. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute Jillian. Hi. Hi. Um, so, uh, Angelina mentioned um, film scoring. Is that, because that's what I'm primarily interested in. So, how do you feel like, like, are there, like, have you gotten, like, a specialized focus in making music for films here? Like, how, what's your take on that? Because I'm assuming you want to do that when you graduate, right? Yeah. So, when I first entered CCS, my original goal was to be a film score composer. Um, but due to the choral conducting, um, but I'm still interested in learning how to compose for films. So I think it's, um, it's really amazing to have like all those different backgrounds and like gaming, film for gaming. I mean, scoring for gaming and things like that. Um, because our major is so customizable, you can kind of focus on whatever you would like to do in music and take classes that kind of go in that realm. Um, so this film music class is, it's the first time it's been offered in a while, I think. I just happened to catch it, and I told all my comp friends about it, and now we're all taking it together, which is very fun. Um, so we do have their opportunities to take classes um, in other places that kind of directly correlate to film, like especially taking film classes in the film and media studies department, like the intro to film and everything. And if you take classes in, those, in that area, then you'll be able to meet other like people interested in film or maybe directing films and I think by having close contact with them and they know you're a composer they can easily reach out to you and ask you to score their film and everything like that so it's a lot of like collaboration based rather than specific classes for film but another thing is in CCS if you like talk to Leslie or Sarah or Andrew and you just make it known that like maybe a film class is something you're interested in or scoring for film and there are enough people in CCS music who would want to maybe one of them can help develop a class that you can take through CCS music that covers that because there are a bunch of people in our department who do want to compose for film and are interested in that so it's kind of by discussion and by just like reaching out to other film majors to like get that experience if that makes sense. Thank you. 
I have some thoughts about that that I would love to add too, but I wonder if it makes sense to keep asking questions for Angie and then maybe Jillian, we can come back to that idea of film music as well later. I think, I think that sounds great. Um, so I'll, I'll try to jot down that we're, we're gonna come back to film scoring later. Um, and then Martina had a question as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and unmute Martina. Yeah, so um, I was wondering like, how many opportunities do you get to like write music for for like other students' films and video games and stuff? Um, like I said previously, it's all about connections you make. So me personally, I'm not interested in composing for games or for music. But another person in our major, Adam, he has a lot of collaborations with film score with film people in the film department and everything so if you make yourself known put yourself out there even by email or getting in contact with a professor who can put you in contact with students that's the best way to get that experience um so i think just like making connections and making it know that you're available to work for them and that you're interested in it that will be the best thing to do um and i'll, I'll add to that just in terms of a, a networking component that um, CCS has a reputation on campus for having um, incredibly creative students. Um, so if you are interested and, and you're thinking about these projects that are connected to places that would be um, uh, knowledgeable of the fact that CCS has music composition students, um, then uh, it's certainly um, a little bit of street cred to go your way that you're coming from the CCS music composition program and would like to add your skills um, to that because they know that you've gone through an application process. They know that you have already written your own compositions um, and that you're already uh, involved in these kinds of creative projects. So like there's a little extra kind of like shiny star next to your name when you introduce yourself as a CCS student for those, um, for those kinds of opportunities. Also, we are the biggest film comp major on campus, LNS Music only has right now about three people and two of them are graduating this year. So really all of the traffic will go to CCS Music and then whoever wants to compose for them will get that opportunity. It's pretty simple and plentiful. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any other uh, burning questions before we um, move on to another topic? I think we're okay. All right. so we. I'm glad, I'm glad we got to take a break um, and just double check on that. Um, so in terms of coursework, uh, one of the other sort of things um, that CCS students, oh, Lily had a question, I apologize. Um, I must have missed it. Uh, I will unmute Lily, um, go ahead. Okay, this is just a quick question and I'm sure it can be answered pretty quickly, but I was just wondering what um, art symposium was because I saw it on the CCS, uh, courses website and there's just like a question that I had about what the class entailed. Um, Sam or um, Sarah, do, do one of you want to answer that? Is that art colloquium perhaps? Art colloquium? Um, it was art symposium. I don't know. Symposium. Uh, is it the one that you take in the very, like is it required for you, you to take the first I think it was, yeah. What is the okay. what does the course number say? Mm -hmm. That might ring a bell. Um I'm not sure. <laughs> if it's what I think it is, is it's a required class um with all of the art majors. Um not so like doesn't matter like what um emphasis you are. Um you take it with every but all the freshmen. Um and then I think sometimes like the first like session you have transfer students too um and it's like kind of introducing you to the art department um and getting you like set up for like like your next like quote unquote like career in ccs um and it kind of like gets you like motivated to like work on you like because you are required like you're you're expected to like do your own art on your own time um and so i think it kind of like helps you like set up a practice and like um, understand like what CCS expects of you as like a like a working student artist. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. 
Um, okay, so uh, the question that we were um, going to touch on, uh, and I'm glad we got to circle back to Lily, um, was uh, that CCS students often um, have opportunities to take advanced coursework um, and uh, to integrate that into some of the things that they already do. So um, CCS students often find themselves um, interested in graduate coursework or um, potentially larger course loads than some other students are engaging in. Um, and I wanted to ask all of you how you manage sort of your workload in, in pursuing all of these um, sort of bountiful opportunities um, that there's so much that's out there and available and engaging. Um, what do you do to sort of uh, anticipate what, how to focus your time? Um, so one thing that's lovely about CCS is that we don't necessarily have a unit cap. Um, so we're able to take whatever classes we're interested in at whatever period of time. I never go too crazy. I think the highest unit count I've taken in one quarter is 21, but one of us CCS majors has taken 26 units in one quarter, and it is a lot, and it's definitely hard to find balance, especially if you're a music student. A lot of our time is spent in ensembles and spent composing and dividing our time between our classes, but a lot of the time it's we enjoy the things that we do in the classes that we're taking because we can take grad classes or we can take like upper division classes before um, we're supposed to. Um, so I think just being able to take classes you're interested in, even though they're more advanced, helps you kind of manage it and be fine with it because you love everything you're doing. Um, yes, I think when I started out, I was definitely, uh, I didn't want to take on way too much at once and what i found is that um especially with studio classes like the time you put into the class racks up really quickly um so i think that i th throughout my like time at ccs i've probably averaged like two sometimes three like studio four unit studio classes um a quarter which can be a lot um i think that the my best advice i was particularly interested in graduating early and being very much on top of like um required classes and ge's and like making sure that i was like taking the classes i needed to take to graduate but that said um i think it you do do a disservice to yourself if you take so many classes that you can't um fully realize the projects you want to in the studio classes you're taking so um and i think knowing how far you can to how much you can take on in addition to whatever like clubs or organizations you're a part of is definitely just um something that you learn as you go along and as you take on different responsibilities but um i think one of the reasons that i really like this program is because for me like my ideal course schedule would be like taking you know a few um studio classes a lot of times in ccs sometimes maybe like an intro class in the art department or intermediate drawing or printmaking or something and then uh taking a ge and something just like in classics or you know religious studies or just something that i that i found interesting and kind of i, I think it, i really value um just using different parts of my brain and um investigating things in different ways um because i think that's very stimulating to um your studio practice even if the class isn't necessarily a studio class Oh no, so, did I, I guess so. I was freezing where I'm saying I'm a, I, I, I think I might have frozen a little bit. So I, I think um, it seems like my uh, my Wi Fi picked back up. Okay. Um, question uh, Wait, tell me the question one more time. Like, yes. Um, so the question was sort of about um, there are so many opportunities for CCS uh, students to. Um, seek out opportunities, uh, whether it's graduate courses or an increased course load or um, so many different kinds of extracurricular activities that you can get involved with. Um, how do you manage that workload and what kind of choices do you make um, uh, in, in how you sort of balance your, your interests and your opportunities? Okay, um, well, as far as um, uh, like variation, I agree with um, Sam in saying that like 
it is really beneficial to vary your course load um, from quarter to quarter. Um, I personally, I burn myself out with studio classes really easily because I like to put a lot of my energy into the projects that um, like are given, especially this year, because um, I found projects that I really like appreciated and um, put my like entire like self like into this like um, like basically a mindset of like I want this to be like like put f forward like my best effort um which means that I didn't spend a lot of like extra time on the classes that I was taking um on the side um that like were also like supplementing my like studio classes um and so it's like I think really easy to like forget about the classes that like that aren't like the ones that you're really um, interested in. And so definitely like take classes that um, for, as like GEs that you're really interested in so you can be engaged in those classes as well. Um, and then also I think that it's really like beneficial, especially in like dorm, like when you're living in like freshman year dorms, it's really easy to just get in like the flow of just like living in dorms and being with your friends and doing all these things but um when you like set up like a schedule for yourself of like these are the times that I'm going to go in and do um like studio work and like this is the time that I'm going to set aside for like my other homework and so yeah um I think that leads really well into a question um and we'll I think maybe hear from Angelina first because then I think we have to let her go um but uh I know several qu students asked questions about dorms, um, partially about the CCS dorm. I don't know, Angelina, if maybe you live there, um, and maybe we can hear from Megan too, because I know if she's still here. No, I think she had to leave us, um, but that's okay. Um, so um, we'll we'll ask about sort of dorms and what it was like to move on to campus, and um, potentially if you lived in the CCS dorm. I, I know some students do, and some students don't. It's it's optional. I um, mean, if any of you had experience with that. Yeah, so I didn't live in CCS dorm, which is the Pandola House in Manzanita Village. I lived in Santa Cruz residence hall. If you look at Savannah's picture, that's CCS. It's like behind there. It's in where all the short dorms are. Um, I decided to live there rather than the Pandola House because I wanted to room with one of my friends from high school, and she wasn't in CCS. So we wanted to venture out and meet people that were outside of CCS. She's not in CCS. Did I say that already? Yeah. Um, but I I was fine with my choice. I really liked it. What, I'm not super involved in CCS community with like other majors, which I think the Pandela House is really good at doing. You're able to like connect with other people from different majors. Um, but I really liked my time in Santa Cruz, and I would recommend it. But the Pandela House, I've heard from a lot of people, is a lot of fun, and there are a lot of late nights and a lot of collaborations and discussions about math and everything like that. So it's a fun time either way. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the dorms. Either way, it'll add a positive experience to your college life. Oops. Oops. Um, if I could just speak quickly on like housing and stuff. Um, I did not also, I did not live in CCS dorms and I don't think that's, I think I know some people have done it and enjoyed it, but it's not like, uh, uh, again, it's not required and it's not necessarily super common. Um, I personally was um, lived, I did the freshman summer start program. So the summer before my first fall quarter, I was um, in San Nicolas. So that's one of the taller dorms, um, uh, freshman year dorms. And I personally thought that was a, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure if they're gonna do that this year, but um, I personally thought that was a good experience. And I think living um, in freshman dorms is a really good way to just, sort of get to know people and reach out, especially if you're not someone who's necessarily um, immersing yourself in social activities all the time. Um, I think CCS as well is a really good pool of just great creative people to, to get to know and everything. Um, and just another quick note on that, kind of related, kind of not, is um, after that experience, I spent the summer after my first year and the summer after my second year doing coursework. Um, the first year I did, um, I think two studio classes and the summer after my second year, well, we'll get into this, but I did, um, I participated in the 
create fund, which is a CCS fellowship. So that's one thing that um, that I personally think can be very, um, I, I, I really like the campus during summer and I, I think that's a great time to do work if you're not like planning a vacation or something. But I just kind of wanted to put a, um, put a promotion in for summer courses because I think that can be a really great way to continue just kind of an intensive course schedule. Um, I just want to say I also lived in Santa Cruz for my freshman year um, and I think that both sides I've had friends I had friends who also lived in um, the CCS house um, dorm and they also they do they did like really like it and enjoy it because they got to make connections with um, the community which I think that um, I just got to make it in like a different way so like um, I got really close with the freshman art majors um, and so through that learned from for uh, like like gained connections with like other like other um, majors in CCS through them as well so like everybody's kind of, because CCS is so small, you do, you are allowed to like make connections with um, other majors, even though like you're not, you don't necessarily like interact with them all the time. Um, but it, I think it just depends on like how, what you make um, your time here as and how like outgoing you are with like the people and stuff like that. So yeah, everybody's also really friendly, so. Thank you guys. Um, Angelina, I know we're probably coming up on your on your last little minute or so, but I just wanted to take the time to say thank you for joining us. Um, it has been absolutely wonderful to have you and I know we all appreciate um, your time and that you were so enthusiastic to be here that you um, were parked in your car the entire time to make sure that you could um, do both as best you can. So I just want to say thank you um, before you head out and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and your weekend. Yes, thank you for having me. Um, comp students, maybe you can like leave your email with Savannah and then we can get in contact if you have other questions. I'm available. I answer emails relatively quickly. Um, but I want to get to know you all if you have any questions. But it was nice talking to you all. I'm going to dip out. Thank okay. you. Bye. 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 Um, so I think uh, um, Sam touched on something, um, and, and I'll kind of um, toot her horn a little bit, uh, that um, is really great about CCS. And some of you asked about resources, and this was sort of um, when I think of like CCS uh, above and beyond resources, this is something that I think about, um, is the different kinds of fellowships that are explicitly available for CCS students. Um, one of them is our summer undergraduate fellowship, so that's uh, funded by the CREATE Fund. Um, you'll hear people call it stuff, you'll hear people call it surf, um, just sort of depends on if there's an R in there or not. Um, but uh, that opportunity for CCS students to apply for summer fellowship funding, um, it's applied for by science students, it's applied for by art students. The goal is that it helps you um, take some time to dedicate to your studies um, by giving you some financial resources to do that with. Um, one of the other fellowships is the Travel Undergraduate Research Fellowship. Um, so we've got Surf and Turf. Um, and the goal is uh, that you can take that fellowship if you need to go somewhere to do some kind of studying, to do some kind of research to advance your, your, um, your work, uh, that that is a fund that's available for CCS students as well. Um, Sarah, I don't know if you've had any um, students who've talked about Surf and Turf, any maybe more advanced students, um, and I know we'll get to Sam as well, um, and she's even got a little YouTube video on her website talking about it, but um, any music student sort of experience with that and, and what music students can use that for? Um, I have to say I'm not up to date on being able to talk about that. I'll, I'll okay. leave the new faculty member <laughs> thing in that way. <laughs> But I will say that if you have questions about that as a music composition major, Andrew, I don't know if you can add anything, but definitely you can email Leslie Hogan. And she's been here for like 20 years, I think. And so she would be able to give you a lot of details about what students have done with that in the past. And I know she would be more than happy to answer your emails. Yeah, the, the one student that comes to mind is a graduating senior in music composition, Nicholas. Um, I'm not sure if it was through one of the fellowships that, that you mentioned, uh, Savannah, but 
I know last summer he was able to um, get a, a funded trip to study music in Vienna um, and he talks about that with uh, with great uh, joy often and apparently it was a really impactful trip for him so yeah I can't speak specifically to those particular fellowships I'm not sure if it was one of those but I do know that music composition uh, TCS students have taken advantage of uh, some of the university resources in terms of the fellowships to travel. And I did have a student um, who actually applied for a grant. He graduated uh, fall quarter and he applied for a grant um, to do a film scoring session with like an uh, ensemble of like 13 or 14 people and got the funding to pay the musicians for the score that he was writing. So definitely music composition students have access to grants and things like that, that can be really useful in the bigger, larger university. Should I speak? Yeah, go ahead, you're up. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so yeah, I heard, I, I became aware of kind of the possibilities of of surf in particular when um, CCS had their uh, RACACON, which is the fall um, conference that basically showcases all the work that students have done for this grant and also just in general, but it's um, particularly a way to show off uh, research that's been done over the previous summer. So um, I I think two years ago was the first RACACON, yes? And so I, uh, I'm pretty sure. So I attended that um, and I was, uh, I thought that was really cool. One student who I really admired um, and still do um, was using, use Surf as a platform to do her research about like food and in relation to like her installation art practice. And I just thought that was really, really cool. And um, I, uh, so my last year, my last summer, I, um, took advantage of, of surf. I applied to surf and um, I was able to basically spend the whole summer essentially in my studio. I didn't take any other classes. You can, it's um, if you submit like a petition, you can take some classes, but I chose to basically just be in my studio every day, meet with my uh, Hank Pitcher, who's um, not my advisor, but one of my mentors once a week and basically treat it as like a um, a test run for like what would it be like to be like a student like an artist in my studio you know every day like this as my job and um, I ended up making seven paintings that were um, predicated on my research of like medieval manuscript marginalia so um, uh, they were kind of like these little grotesques these like 12 inch round funny paintings um, and I, it was a, just a really illuminating process and just m much more sort of immersive than for me at least than um, I mean, then sort of trying to balance a bunch of coursework at one time. And so it was that, I think that was a very special um, opportunity for me. And I think what's great about SURF is it's basically, I think, you know, if you have a special opportunity with special resources allocated towards you and you have the bandwidth to pursue them, then it's just, uh, it's just a, a no brainer. So I think it's great just like with everything in CCS, it's really customizable. Um, and you know, if you've been working on some project and you and you want to do some capstone, some capstone work to to finish it off, or you know, if you just need need a lot of time to do work, then it's twelve weeks to just focus on that. So I think it's um, I think it's it's a really great opportunity. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Sam, for giving us your your very um, detailed experience because uh, it's really <laughs> really nice to sort of hear um, what you were able to use that for um, and especially um, uh, I think for art and music students to realize that these funds aren't just for STEM students. Um, I think that's sometimes a common misconception that money is only out there for students with Department of Defense contracts and things like that and that's that's just not true. There's, there's resources and support for the creative arts as well. Um, so one of the Last questions that I'll pose, and then I think what we'll do is we'll open it up just because I think an hour of just talking heads um, uh, can, can get a little slow, so we'll see how we do. Um, the last one's very sort of straightforward, and, and this is where, you know, maybe in a couple of years I'll have all the students' experiences in my head, but um, for now I don't, and we're going to find out what the answers are. Um, the, the question is, can CCS students study abroad? And the short answer is yes. Um, <laughs> 
And that's, uh, and, and I can elaborate on that as like a staff advisor, but I don't know if any, um, if our professors or our, our students, um, if they have experience or have friends who had experience um, that they would want to speak about just in terms of um, going to other pro programs um, uh, as a CCS student and, and taking advantage of everything that's out there. I know Andrew mentioned we had a music student who went to Vienna um, and, and maybe what other kinds of opportunities are out there that because you're part of this sort of bigger university, these connections that get built to other places so that students can take some time and go. But I don't know who wants to start. Um, if any of you went abroad, maybe um, uh, we can start there. But if not, then maybe, um, I don't think, Sam, you went abroad. Um, but I don't know. Sarah, did you go? No, I didn't. I decided not to because I'm trying to double minor. But um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I do have a friend who went abroad and she's a, she's also, she's a, I think she's a senior book arts major right now. Um, so she went last year um, and she went to Italy for a semester. Um, and I think she just used it as like a way to like um, do GEs. So it wasn't necessarily like, I think she did do like some like printmaking, like, um, like coursework and stuff like that. So I think it just depends on like the, um, like talk to your like faculty advisor and like figure out like what um coursework like would work for your major um so it's possible but i'm not entirely sure what it would look like <laughs> sure. Sarah, do you have any info on is it penland because i sure don't but i know that's a book yeah. arts yeah that's a book arts thing um it's more of a i know we do have like a slot for book arts um every year um they um, pick somebody to um, do, I think it's a full scholarship to just go, um, to, Penland is a um, program in, I think, North Carolina um, in the woods, and they basically just, um, it's like a whole, like, two-week workshop, and you um, work with um, an artist, and they um, share with you as very, it's, it's very specific um, to, like, what they do, um, but they share with you, like, uh, like a process and um, you learn it in, in detail um, and it's a really really cool opportunity to go and learn from um, different um, like professors and um, like like meet people from all across the country who do book arts so yeah um I can speak to I know that we had um, a junior this year who spent a quarter abroad which i think actually ended up being like more like a semester mm -hmm. um for that you know whatever the system was um because it's i think she did the fall and i think that's generally what um we recommend is because the fall program starts earlier for a lot of these abroad sessions like it'll start in august or something like that and then you can come back and start normally in January um, in the winter quarter. Um, and that way you aren't missing like two quarters or you aren't getting back mid spring quarter, which is awkward um, if you were to do that. So I do know that it's possible with our music students. I will say from my experience, um, and uh, Andrew, I'd be curious about you too. It is also very, very common for music students to go to summer music programs abroad. And um, that's that. I think that's what Nicholas did, right, Andrew? Uh, I believe so. I think it was an extended program, though. I, I don't think okay. it was just like a week. I thought it was. I think it was several weeks. So on the longer side of what music pro, music summer festivals typically are. Okay, so I think that you know there are definitely programs that are great where you can study abroad in music composition. If those don't suit you um, to exactly what you know you're interested in, or you know, sometimes there's, um, well, anyway, if it's just not what you're interested in, you don't want to be gone an entire, you know, like three months, there's many great, like one to two to seven or eight week summer programs that I know you can apply to travel grants and things like that to help get funding to go to those sort of things over the summer. And that can be a really useful way to do some abroad studying. Um, I'll, I'll put on my, yeah. my, go ahead. Sorry, Andrew, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was just going to agree. Yes, that's, that's definitely true. Music festivals are a massive resource for uh, young composers. It gives you the opportunity to see 
what people are doing in other places in the world. Uh, you make connections that you're going to have for the rest of your career. Um, you get your music performed typically by phenomenal ensembles and musicians. You get to study with faculty members from other institutions. Uh, on the uh, non-musical side of things, you get experience uh, traveling to places all over the world. Um, yeah, it's usually very inspiring and I highly recommend any student who's interested in doing a festival to take a look at what is, what is being offered that summer. So, yeah. Um, I'll put on my staff advisor hat for a little bit and just um, offer my opinions. Uh, so um, before I came to CCS, uh, I was the History of Art and Architecture um, Department advisor. So um, art history students, um, which isn't uh, too far of a stone's throw from our, our art students' interest, um, I encouraged them to go abroad often, um, almost as often as possible, um, because I think um, there are so many experiences out there that um, are available through study abroad that are so much more difficult to access almost at any other point in your life. Um, and there are so many places that you can go. Um, most students go to Western Europe because that's where sort of a lot of um, the things that they've seen projected on the screens in their classroom comes from. So sometimes they, they want to go see those things in, in real life, but there's so many programs in South Africa or Southeast Asia or China, Japan, South America, um, different places that students can go. And there's different funding opportunities for that as well across the university. So while CCS has our own specific funding opportunities, there are big picture um, uh, UCSB resources as well for different students to go and study different things. Um, so if you are interested in studying abroad, it's definitely, I think, doable. And especially if it's something that's important to you, I, it's something that you can examine the options for and and sort of my um, it, it always sort of sounds like an overstatement and it is but uh, my opinion is that the EAP office so that's um, education abroad program so the study abroad office um, they're some of the most enthusiastic people on campus that I have ever met um, you can walk into their office and be like I want to study abroad and like people repel down out of the ceilings and they're like where do you want to go and like so uh, if it's an interest of yours and you and you have a vision for like why it would be valuable, there's all these online resources to check out what might be out there and to think about it and then to work that into your plan. Um, whether it's that you're going somewhere in the summer or you go somewhere for a particular um, quarter um, or even some other programs like UCDC, if there's a reason for you to want to go to Washington, D.C. for something, um, there's, there's all these kinds of different opportunities uh, to not to to take advantage of UCSB resources outside of UCSB. Um, so it is something that I do encourage students to think about and, and to consider. It's not necessarily something that's required of anybody, but um, I do think it's uh, um, the students who do it tend to really get a lot out of it. Um, and I think I kind of touched, I think we touched on most of the things that are kind of common questions. Um, and I think this is a good opportunity to kind of open things up. Uh, if we have any other um, general student questions, and I know, Sarah, you had wanted to touch on film story. Um, so I don't know if we want to get back to that first, um, since that was sort of a pending question that we left on the table. Um, and then I'll monitor the participants tab as well. So there's a, a raise hand button. Um, and if you click that, then you'll shoot up to the top of the list and we'll, and we'll see who's next. Great. I was just going to say in regard, regards to film scoring, um, and Andrew, feel free to chime in on this as well, that um, I do want to point out that this is not a like film scoring music composition major, but it is a major in which we are excited to see whatever excites you. And that we believe that any sort of tools that we are giving you through the core classes that you have to take like orchestration, or harmony or contemporary techniques. All of those tools are tools for the broader compositional toolbox that you will absolutely tenfold use in film music should you choose to go into that after graduation. So um, it is a, it's a music composition degree that's like, you know, general and accepting and what you want to do, but you will be asked to write concert music for ensembles of various sizes. For instance, 
you can look on the CCS website if you want to take a look at the sophomore and jury, uh, sophomore and junior, excuse me, sophomore and junior jury requirements. <laughs> that was a tongue twister. Uh, you can look those up now and it shows you the kinds of pieces that we look for, let's say in your sophomore jury, including um, a piece for a solo instrument that isn't piano or a piece that's you know more than three minutes that explores different types of harmony or things like that or a piece for four or more instruments so there's wiggle room in what there can be but there's also specificity and essentially any sort of film scoring projects that aren't for a class that maybe one of us would be teaching or that you're taking outside of ccs or any film projects that you just take on on your own those will basically be projects that you are bringing to us. Um, that the, the assignments that we ask of for you in composition lessons won't inherently involve film unless that's something that we are working on together, that that's what you want to work on. Andrew, do you have anything to add to that? Um. Yeah, I think the notion of having a strong foundation in instrumentation and orchestration is very important. And I think if you had, if you ask any uh, professional film composer, they'd probably agree. <laughs> um, it's not to say that there isn't value in having a specialized study of film scoring, um, but for the first few years of your uh, post-secondary education, uh, I think it's a lot of foundation building about uh, studying what successful uh, orchestral composers have done, studying uh, what makes great counterpoint, understanding you know, where harmony has gone throughout music history, throughout Western music history. Um, and we do have some opportunities uh, at UCSB to study some more of the media side of things. Um, right now, I am uh, trying to renovate the composer studio at CCS. So we're getting a variety of, of softwares that can be utilized for uh, audio production and for, uh, to some extent, film scoring. Um, but as, as Sarah mentioned, it's not a film scoring degree. It's a degree that you can take to a lot of different places. And um, yeah, there's, there's nothing precluding you from, from getting any further specialized uh, education in film scoring and uh, the proximity to both Los Angeles and then also within our campus to people who are making films and studying films, um, I think is, is a really big advantage here. And I also, have students. Who, oh, sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna. I, I just remember, like, I, I have students right now who have scored independent films and bring it to me every week, and uh, it's it's really impressive uh, the sort of access that they get to filmmakers just on campus. Absolutely. That, that was the only thing I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, most of my students have brought a film score into me by now, and um, and also it's very common to project a film with the score that you've written at your senior recital. Um, that, that happened, um, well, because of where we are right now, I've only been to one senior recital live <laughs> at CCS, but he was my student and he had like three short films that he had scored on the recital by other students that had made the films in the um, larger university. I'll chime in uh, real quick and I'm going to be brief and then we'll move on to our first question. Um, so part of what they're touching on is that um, UC Santa Barbara, uh, one of the things that's um, sort of unique, we're not, we're not in LA, we're not in Hollywood, but um, Santa Barbara is uh, very much um, still part of the film community. Um, and because it's fairly isolated from that sort of LA hub, the film community that is here is very closely networked. Um, and so that is something that uh, various students take advantage of, that we have a Santa Barbara International Film Festival every year and, and that there are these kinds of resources um, for film students uh, that's within proximity, 
um, to those sort of bigger schools, but it's far enough away that you're not necessarily competing with students from those other programs to be part of the Santa Barbara film community, if that is an interest of yours. Um, so our first question is from Jeremy. He's a music comp student, and then we'll take our second question from Isabella, who's uh, coming in for sculpture. And go ahead. Actually, I have six questions. What? How should I space them out? Um, that, that's a that's a lot of questions. Um, I would say start with like big picture stuff, and then we can sort of see where we go, and maybe we'll answer your um, sort of more detailed questions on the way. And I do want to make sure we get to Isabella too. So so we'll kind of see how we go. Okay. So is there how is there any way to test out of um, AP Music Theory? Um, or um, of music of the first course of music theory because um, I I looked over it before I got here and I looked like um, a bunch of things that I'm actually very um, professional in um, but um, I'm really interested in probably moving up to the um, five B. Um, yes, so there's there's entrance exams that you take um, and those are in the um, music department. So the theory and the harmony and musicianship classes are offered in the music department and if you um, pass the entrance exams then they'll place you in the appropriate class. Ah, um, what um, type of keyboards do you have? Do you have like a um, like a like a Roland Jupiter 8 or like a Rhodes electric piano or like a clavinet available to be utilized by compositions? Yeah, so I, as I mentioned, I'm currently um, renovating the CCS studio, and the vision for that space is it's it's two rooms kind of uh, <laughs> that form a T. Uh, there's more of a composition uh, workspace in the front uh, with computers and 11 by 17 printer and uh, audio interfaces and headphones. So it's more so to be composing or working with small groups. And then the back space is going to be a uh, small recording studio. So we have a number of keyboards uh, in that space um, that will be uh, able to be uh, accessed by composition majors. Um, you would go through a small training uh, you know, meeting with me, and then I would give you access to sign out time and book time uh, in the back studio uh, whenever it's available. So in that space, there's a Rhodes keyboard. Um, there's some Korg keyboards. We have a full 88 key weighted e uh, keyboard. I believe that's also a Korg keyboard. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different keyboards. We even have a, a really cool keyboard that has a uh, vintage tube amp uh, as part of the keyboard to get analog distortion. Uh, so, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Let's see. Um, does Win Ensemble or Jazz Ensemble or Perhaps a class in music production or audio engineering, does that count as general ed or is it too um, involved in music to be a music composition? Savannah, do you know? Uh, I, I can answer that. Um, so, so basically, um, you, anything that would be offered by the music department would be a no-go for a general education requirement that's unrelated to the major. Um, uh, it's, it's just too literal a connection. Um, and so uh, we, we would encourage you to be looking um, uh, further afield for something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember reading that or hearing that there was like, either like um, in CCS, the dorms are, you perceive like one person in the dorm or two people in the dorm. Um, could you explain how they determine who gets one dorm, one person per dorm or two people per dorm? Um, I, I'm afraid that that's a question that no, isn't necessarily um, in our wheelhouse. Um, that would be a question for like housing um, and, and sort of those kinds of opportunities. Um, I know UCSB is putting together a virtual open house that's more sort of a big picture campus um, questions. And that's something that um, would have been very easy if we, were, if we were on campus to sort of point to Stork Tower and say, ah, go ask your questions over there. But um, unfortunately, we're just not in that environment. Um, what I'm going to do, Jeremy, is I'm going to pause you for a minute, and then I, I do want to make sure that we get to Isabella as well. Um, so, Isabella, do you want to go ahead and maybe um, ask some of your questions? Sure. 
Um, so as you mentioned, I'm coming in as a sculpture major, and I would love to know about the experience in getting a studio space uh, and whether that happens like only for upperclassmen or if that's something you could access as a freshman or sophomore. Yeah, that's great. And that, um, that uh, good timing because Matt just asked about um, like bringing art supplies and like uh, to CCS and um, whether or not there are any supplies provided. So um, I'll first answer um, about the studios. Right now, as far as I know, the it's because uh, there's um, a lot of students right now. Um, students are typically getting studio spaces from their second year onward. So um, that's what happened with me. Um, uh, and there are, um, I think three different um, groups of studios. So there's like a, a, it's a very, each studio is like a very large room and it's usually split up between like six, seven people, um, students. So there's two that are particularly uh, geared for painting and um, because they have like fans set up and um, windows to open and stuff. And then there's a printmaking um, studio, which is uh, adjacent to the, um, the print shop, which has all the, um, uh, presses and stuff like that for book arts. Um, and so, yeah, until in, in your first year, before you get a studio, what uh, you're able to do is usually, um, professors are relatively lax. Um, if you, if you're working on a project in class, you can usually leave it in the painting room 120, um, which is where like life drawing, life painting classes are intro, like all CCS painting classes are usually in that room when there's a studio. So um, I even somehow managed to leave like a, in my first year, like a four foot by four foot canvas somewhere. And I was kind of threatened with that it was going to get thrown out, but it didn't. So um, that is, you know, things are possible. Usually, you know, if you ask nicely, you, you're able to get a lot of accommodation by professors and um, faculty and, you know, needing to borrow supplies to um, hang things and all that. Um, but as far as, and as far as art supplies, Matt said, um, that you can, uh, bring, um, I would recommend, like, definitely bringing, like, whatever you're interested in working on, like, definitely bringing pencils and painting supplies, because there's no, there's no, um, you don't get, like, a starter set or anything to supply to you. There's a nice campus store that actually has a pretty decent, uh, assortment of, like, paints uh, and brushes and all these things. So you can always buy there, but it's it's kind of cost effective to have some stuff that you bring with you. Um, my first year I brought in like a rolling cart with like different shelves of like, so, um, well actually, did I bring that? Yeah, and I had that in my dorm my first year. Um, and then I could sometimes bring stuff back and forth from the studio. So um, yeah, I guess my advice would be to, um, to, to bring stuff, stuff you can keep in your room, maybe bring to CCS. Um, if you haven't, uh, if you, um, if you are a painting and drawing major, you will take a painting and drawing class your first year. So just keep in mind that if you don't have paints, you're probably going to get them. And usually that means oil paints. Um, Lily just asked about, um, uh, as a painting major, um, what classes you need to start out with. Um, and you don't have to, you don't have to start out with, um, there's no like order that you're required to um, take classes in. Um, I started out taking a couple painting classes in CCS and I eventually took like an intermediate drawing class. Um, so there, the thing about CCS classes is um, usually there's other art students who have a lot of experience in different areas, but um, there's no, um, there's no like, for a CCS art class, there's not usually like an entry point where it's like, okay, you need to have taken class A, B, and C. It's like, bring what you have, and we expect you to work hard and make make work consistently, but at your level. We want you to challenge yourself, but generally um, at your level, because sometimes there's people who aren't CCS art students. So to that question, I would just say, um, don't worry about taking it, if, if you've been accepted, um, you're accepted. You're, you're a CCS artist. So once that happens, um, even if you haven't, even if your background's in drawing and you're taking a painting class, or even if you've only painted an acrylic, but now you're going to paint in oil, um, just come at it with um, sort of a desire to learn. And 
absorb information from other people, ask your classmates questions about their practice, ask your professor questions, um, and, I, and, and you should be good. So I hope that answered those questions pretty well. I think that answered everyone's questions pretty well that I was seeing coming in. So that was um, uh, really good. And I think that answered Matt's question about um, supplies as well. Um, and then um, we'll do uh, Jillian and then Jeremy will come back to you. Uh, go ahead, Jillian. Hi. So um, where do IB, IB and AP credits fit into this? Like, because obviously we, well, most of us have probably taken those courses, so we're supposed to have college credit, but does that like, is that changing and like, like how does that fit in? That's a really good question. Um, so uh, many, many, many um, CCS students do come in with uh, a number of AP and even IB credits. Um, and so what many students take those classes for is to satisfy GEs before they get to college. Um, and this is where CCS is very different. Um, because CCS has a limited number of GE requirements, we do not accept AP classes to count for those eight GE classes. Um, what this does mean though, is you do still get credit for those AP classes. They are still part of your degree progress. Um, so in order to get a degree from UCSB period, you have to have um, a, at least 180 units of coursework and your AP classes are counting in towards that. Um, so many of our students who come in are already in sophomore standing. Um, and so the goal is that, you know, you, you can shave off some time in terms of getting to your totals. Um, but at CCS, we do still want students to have those additional experiences um, at a research university to take dinosaurs and geology of surfing and um, history of music, uh, depending on what kind of field they're in and, and to sort of explore beyond. So um, you do get credit for those AP classes, um, but we still want you to take advantage of. Yeah, I still want to take a bunch of GEs. So we're yeah, exactly. Um, so, but that's a really good question, and that's something that um, is always kind of uh, a starting baseline for everybody, is that um, you got credit for it, congratulations, you've got a head start as far as like standing goes, um, but just it's for CCS, it's welcome to college, like ready for the next <laughs> step. Yeah. If, and if I could just butt in really quickly, the one of the main reasons that I've been able to graduate a year early is because of AP classes and getting those credits, so just Keep in mind, I don't know where you all are um, as far as your classes and stuff, but that can be a way to um, to sort of jumpstart like with with as far as coursework goes. Yeah. And I have a really quick second question, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very involved in like a lot of, at my high school, involved in like a lot of different programs. And when I was talking to some of my teachers, they're like some art universities or like art programs are very protective and they only want like you're in like you're only doing music when I really enjoy like doing theater as well or like doing like student government. So how protective are uh not protective at all. <laughs> um we want you to do what you're interested in. Right now I have a student who is very interested in musical theater composition. When he leaves here, he wants to um, major in musical theater writing for grad school. And, mo and he's also an economics double major. So he's taking a ton of economics classes, a ton of theater classes, um, writing for theater, like well, all these sorts of things. And then of course his music classes as well. So um, it's, it's whatever you're interested in and it's, you know, Obviously, we're, as your advisors, we're making sure that you're taking the right things, that you'll graduate on time, and that you're taking the music courses in a correct order that you need to take them. But beyond that, it's very malleable. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I would use the term, uh, instead of protective, just uh, an atmosphere of, of encouragement and uh, support it, perhaps. That's that's great. Um, Jeremy, I promised we'd get back to you. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and, and sort of see what else. I, and I know I just wanted to revisit, like there's some kinds of questions that maybe we won't be able to answer. So um, let's, let's hear what you got. Is there a search notation software or like a list of notation software that we have to choose from that we must utilize? Uh, I can I can chime in. Um, there's not an official CCS uh, notation software. Um, 
there's maybe four or even five different softwares that people are using. Um, I use Sibelius, and uh, that's the one that I, I typically will recommend. Uh, you can get a pretty decent discount as a student in general with Sibelius, um, and it may be possible to, to have CCS provide, if you can have a demonstrated need, um, they might be able to, to supplement some additional costs. But uh, yeah, there's not a specific, people use uh, Muse Score, they use Valius, Finale. Yeah. Oh. So, Sarah, what, what are your thoughts on, on notation software? Yeah, um, I use Finale. I think Sibelius and Finale are probably preferred, um, but most of my students are using MuseScore or NoteFlight. So, um, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> We're open. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So I use NoteFlight. Um, and more of a technical question. I remember um, reading that um, that um, that kind of a goal is um, for my for when I'm trying to go into graduate school. You want my work that my work should be um, both imprinted and magnetic form. What is what is meant by magnetic? Does it mean more like a digital form? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where it says magnetic. Uh, my apologies, but yeah, you're, you're going to want uh, both to be able to print out your scores and have it presentable. Um, as a physical document, and then of course you're gonna you're gonna want to have it as PDFs and things like that. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we had one more art question, and then I think I think I think we oh we got we got one more from um, Jonathan, um, but we'll get this one first. Uh, so Moxie asked if you're working on a personal art project. I think this is related to studio space. Um, uh, unrelated to classwork, is there a space where you can work on that, or do you have to figure that out on your own? Um, and uh, we, I'll, I'll just preempt something that we haven't touched on necessarily that's, that's broad, general, very um, big picture stuff. Uh, and that's about the CCS building. Um, so the CCS building, uh, one of the privileges of being a CCS student is that our students are issued uh, through their key card access to the electronic locks after hours. Um, so it is very much a privilege of CCS students to be able to enter the building um, uh, currently 24 seven, not right now because it's locked down because there's nobody in there. Um, but during the regular school year that students can access the building um, at any time uh, in order to access um, resources or space or our print lab and different things like that. So um, that's like big picture stuff um, that sometimes can enable students to have a little more um, personal space to complete some research projects. Um, but as far as art space, um, I don't know if uh, Sarah, if you want to weigh in or, or Sam about um, when students are working on a, um, something else, maybe unrelated to coursework, is there a space where they can do that if they don't have their own studio? Um, so basically, there's like different, in the CCS department, there's different rooms that you can go into if you're a book arts major. Um, the, the print shop is open, you get a key, um, so it's open to you 24-7 um, when the building is open. And then um, that's also where studios come into play. So when you have a studio, it does give you that allowance of you can either use it as storage space or you can, um, a lot of painting majors I know like have their easel set up and just like have that um, to use as like their own personal um, use basically. Um, when you don't have that, um, there is, I, I remember I used to use um, either, there's a huge, um, like one big main um, room in CCS that um, we I would go in with my friends and just do like art nights in there. Um, and then there's also a painting room um, that a lot of like just painting majors just use, I think in general. I think Sam can also, I don't know what the rules are for that. Yeah, I would just add, um, that's all, that's all very true. Um, I would just add that one thing to consider and then one thing that's a, a very much a uh, a, a point of discussion in um, like the the painting sort of uh, what is it called materials and practices which is like an intro introductory course to painting within CCS is um, like toxicity and what materials you're using so um, you just 
uh, I'm, you will probably talk with your advisor about this, but um, just being sure that um, like there, uh, if you're painting with oils to use a facility that has good ventilation, we have the painting room has fans, um, which that was something that was important to me coming into CCS to make sure that those facilities were there um, to um, so that we art could be made safely, basically. Um, but yeah, if you're doing um, so, if you're doing painting, you're limited to certain spaces within CCS. If you're painting with oils, for example, but if you're you know if you're doing watercolor, if you're doing you know if you're making stuff out of Sculpey, if you're drawing, there's a lot more spaces. Um, that you can kind of uh, co-opt. There's also um, lockers, so you can sign up for a locker space um, about like yay big, bigger, um, that you can put your stuff in. Um, so, you know, it can hold like a bunch of canvases, your paints, so the stuff you do bring to CCS um, coming in, you can put straight in a locker, so anything that can fit in there. Um, and that's why I suggested like, you know, paint stuff to paint with or draw with so that you can um, make stuff in your in your first classes. Oh, I will also interject that if you do end up taking um, classes in LNS for um, the art department, um, which I assume you probably end up well, like well doing so, um, they do give you extra like storage space to put all of your stuff. So like either a drawer or if you're I think in your if you're in um, one of the painting classes, they give you like a locker and some shelving space. So that is also an option. All right, I think we have time for two questions. So we've got Jonathan and Martina, and then I know we're approaching um, the five o'clock hour. And I just wanna thank everyone, um, sort of briefly in advance, but I'll, I'll thank you again in a little bit. Um, so our first question is from Jonathan. Hello, uh, I just remember someone mentioning something about double majoring. And I was wondering how common of a practice that is at CCS and how much, what that kind of workload would look like? Um, I'll put my staff advisor hat on first, um, just to talk about that uh, big picture wise. Um, I've met double majors. I've even met triple majors. Um, I've met majors and minors. Um, Sarah was talking about a double minor. Um, so some students will uh, double major within CCS. Um, and so what that means for them is they live entirely within the rules uh, and, and sort of parameters of CCS and they get to keep many of their CCS privileges um, in that process. Uh, when a student double majors outside of the College of Creative Studies, so when they go to the College of Letters and Science and they become a student in that umbrella as well, LNS rules kick in. Um, so if you become an LNS double major with CCS, uh, now the LNS GE, GE rules also apply. Um, so for some students, that's great because they have all these AP credits sitting in the background that like weren't getting used before and so it's not a big deal. Um, for other students, maybe that's a thing to think about and maybe it's uh, whether that maybe a minor would be better for them because a minor is gonna have less sort of big picture major requirements. Um, it'll be more about uh, the rules within that department for that minor. Um, so really some of what that comes down to is like your, your background, your time management, how long you want to spend. I imagine Sam could say, you know, if she double majored, she wouldn't be graduating in three years. Um, so there's, there's pros and cons, and some of them are frankly very financial. Um, and so some of it will be once you come to CCS and you get an opportunity to settle in and start your coursework, um, figuring out what, what you want to do from there. Um, and it's something that you can pick up as you go. Uh, so I would say maybe don't, um, my general advice would be probably if you're thinking about a double major, that's great. I would say keep that in the back of your mind for like the first two quarters before deeply committing to that and kind of test the waters and see how it goes. Um, that would be my general student advising. Thank I don't you. know if that, yeah, did that answer your question or did you have anything sort of more specific? No, 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 that was pretty good, awesome, thank you. Okay, great. Um, Martina, I think you're um, perhaps our last question, and I will unmute you now. Uh, so I have the MIDI keyboard at home I use sometimes for music composition. So do you think it would be helpful for me to bring that, or would it like take up too much space or something? 
I think it would be great to bring it. I brought a MIDI keyboard with me to college when I started college and I used it all the time <laughs> because sometimes you can, you have access to pianos and things and um, you can, there's pianos in the CCS buildings and there's also pianos in the practice rooms in the music building that um, with permission from a teacher you can get access to. Um, but I think that, you know, sometimes it's full because people practice and pianists, Piano majors do get first access to the pianos in the music department. Um, so it's always nice to have a keyboard in your dorm room. And as long as you have headphones, I think most uh, roommates won't be too, think that that's too problematic. <laughs> I think that's general good advice. Um, I will uh, second that there are um, pianos in the CCS building. And as one of those sort of perks for the access to the building, um, that means that you do have uh, access to that piano. Might not be the best tuned machine in the universe because um, it's sort of just uh, openly available. It's not necessarily um, as deeply maintained, but um, we get students who have piano experience of all majors who um, will kind of come into the building and, and just kind of get in an hour of practice and maintenance. And it's, it's honestly really kind of lovely. Um, Jeremy, I, I see you got your hand raised, and so I think maybe you'll be our last question, and then we will um, we'll wrap up for the day. Okay, um, I have a bunch of like woodwind instruments and other instruments, um, and I believe it might be too loud to play in a dorm room. What would the best place to practice them be? The practice rooms. <laughs> um, so whenever you can reserve a practice room or if there's a classroom that's available, um, the composition um, department in CCS does have a room that's kind of just open space for composers, but the students are always very kind and aware and empath empathetic to what everybody needs in that space. Very often it's just a space where people come together to work on scores or, you know, sit with their headphones on. But I'm sure that in the right moment, if there weren't people around, you could use that space as well. But basically you just have to be flexible and you have to be aware of the, your surroundings. Mm -hmm. I think um, I'm gonna use that note to segue into just um, a brief statement that um, one of the things that sort of CCS prides itself on is that, that sense of community um, uh, we're still holding like Zoom coffee hours with our students on Wednesdays to, to try to maintain that kind of community and that collaboration and, and the sort of um, awareness of each other's gifts and talents and that we're, um, this is a really special place to be. So um, I just want to thank uh, our students and our faculty for being here for, for two hours on a Friday. Um, I know that's a, a big ask sometimes, but, um, I, and, and for all of you for coming with us. And, I just want to say thank you for responding to, to such kind of a, um, a quick turnaround of a request for your time. Uh, and I do hope that this was helpful for you as you consider um, where you want to go for the next uh, several years of, of your next stage. Um, and so I just want to issue kind of a, a, an electronic round of applause um, for all of our speakers uh, and um, thank all of you for being here. And if you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to either Megan or myself or potentially um, the faculty. Um, yes, exactly, Sarah, um, uh, who would be willing to answer your questions um, about sort of their department. And, that, and that's sort of a great way to think about it too, right? Is your question sort of tailored specifically to your program? Email your program. Um, is it a question kind of about big picture CCS stuff? Email CCS staff. Um, and that's a really kind of good two houses um, way to think about the way CCS works in general. So, you know, as, you, as CCS students go through, that's kind of big picture stuff as staff and, and individual stuff is, um, is for your department. Um, but I just want to thank everyone again. I know I've done that several times now, but it's just been really um, fabulous to have you all here. And I hope you have a very pleasant weekend. Um, and I'll say goodbye. Bye, everybody.